the whole of the iberian peninsula, all of spain and portugal. absolutely astonishing astonishing situation the head of spain's electricity electrical network has dismissed reports that the failure of the power systems was due to reliance on solar and wind power experts warn it might take days or weeks to find out why the system collapsed marian midday is a bbc journalist in in lisbon marian what I mean, there must be conspiracy theories developing now, but what's the closest we've got to official conclusions? Um, hi, yes, definitely. There are a lot of conspiracy theories and discussions about what the cause is. Um, solar panel, uh, solar energy and renewable resources is definitely one of the top theories. Um, there was also, on the day of the incident, mention of uh, changes in weather could have um, caused the... Um, issue, but many people didn't buy that. And um, as we know now, that a cybersecurity attack uh, has been ruled out as a cause, although there are still a few whispers and they are still uh, investigating the cause. So it seems like they haven't established a definite cause, but um, yeah, discussions about what that could be are, are happening. And I mean, if you happened over here, there'd be an enormous amount of finger pointing going on. Is that is that what it's like there? Is uh, who, who's bl who's blaming who at the moment? Well, um, I wouldn't say necessarily a lot of finger blaming. There was a lot of collaboration between uh, Spain and, and and Portugal on the issue. So. Um, both sides um, of the party agreed to uh, suspend their energy exchanges as a as a precaution, um, even though the um, interconnections remained operational at the time. Um, so it seems like the focus was more trying to uh, solve the issue as it, it did cause huge disruptions. Um, it as you described, was definitely extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I had never experienced anything like it. You know, network was down, no public transportation, all restaurants closed, um, similar images to COVID with bulk buying. Um, so it felt like, uh, despite all the chaos and confusion, that um, people didn't want to want to blame, but more kind of get down to the mm -hmm. cause of it. Keith Bell joins us, Scottish Power Professor of Future Power Systems at the University of Strathclyde. Keith, thanks for thanks for coming on. Um, so, what do we what do we know for sure? I mean, this statement on Monday night that there was a strong oscillation in the power flow. What was the? I don't know what that is, but what, do, do, is that what happened? Do we know that for sure? Well, I've seen some uh, some some data that's been published online that looks like there was some. Uh, some oscillations at some point, but I've also seen some of those plots suggesting that, that actually they they damped out, had gone away, by the, you know before the the first kind of trip happened of, of the solar PV. Well, I don't know if it's actually don't know if it's solar PV, whatever it was. You know the the, the, the Spanish system operator has said oh, there's there's some stuff that kind of fell off the system. Their observations are just saying it's consistent with loss of generation of some kind. There was another one a second and a half later. And then according to their timeline, three and a half seconds after that, they lost the connection between Spain and France. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's still an emerging picture. And as I say, those, according to what I've seen, those oscillations had already damped out before any of that happened. So it's, it's still not it's still not clear. And, and, and an oscillation is what? Is that like a variation? It, yes, exactly. Yeah. So you can see, for example, you know, we're accustomed to, you know, we talk about a 50 hertz power system, you know, that's the alternating current on our supply. It's never exactly at 50 hertz, you know, it's varying all the time and it sort of self-balances, you know, in terms of various automatic controls on the system. Um, and it can increase and decrease. So we might have seen actually, you know, one, one form of oscillation might be that sort of increasing and decreasing at a certain rate. The voltage might be increasing and decreasing at a certain rate rather than the average being kind of constant. Um, so these sorts of phenomena are kind of known from the engineering principles, if you like, and over history, we've seen them emerge under different circumstances with different mixes of technology. And then, I mean, they're not, they're not good to happen. You want them to be damped out and everything to be nice and smooth and steady. Uh, so then it's a matter of analyzing and saying, okay, well, if it did come, why, why did it come? And then tuning various controls to try to ensure that when, they kind of, when a control sees something, that it responds in the right way, and then all of these different controls interact in a, in a, in a good way. But why would why would it make any difference how the power was generated in the in the first place 
would be it solar to... wind or whatever or, or coal or or whatever why is that even relevant unless there's a sudden lot of sunshine or suddenly the sunshine mm. stops or the wind suddenly goes to hurricane force from nothing or vice versa i don't get what difference it makes you're quite right. It shouldn't make any difference, actually. So a system operator has, and this is the same around the world, everyone uses a similar sort of protocol. The system operator is, is, is obliged, that's their job, is to operate the system you know, in real time, you know, minute by minute, second by second, in a, you know, in a stable manner, but also what they call in a secure manner, which means that if, if any one fault happens, it might be a lightning strike on a line or an equipment failure on a power station, so it changes the condition of stuff. Being N minus one secure, it's still okay. Everything's still all right. And they would have been carrying out simulations of kind of what if scenarios, if you like. If this happened or that happened, would it be okay? And then they adjust things in advance to make sure that it would to kind of maintain those margins. And that is that's their obligation, regardless of whether the energy is coming from coal or nuclear or hydro or wind or solar or whatever. These technologies do have different kind of uh, engineering characteristics, I suppose in terms of uh, the sort of their dynamic behavior, you know, kind of conventional old, old style power stations that use steam to make heat to turn the turbines, like nuclear or coal or, or gas fired. They have, you know, there's big lumps of metal that are spinning in the electrical machines that generate the electricity. Whereas uh, with wind and solar, there are sort of power electronic devices, electronic switches in there that kind of synthesize an alternating current waveform. So that they are different. But the system operator knows that and has had years and years of you know, learning and kind of building up of experience of, of how they behave and building these things into their models such that in the end it doesn't, as you suggest, you know, it, it shouldn't make a difference. The system mm -hmm. should be secure, it should be operable, it should be stable, and they need to make sure that it is. I mean, I don't know about you, Marion, but what I'm getting is just from real experts unlike us, there's just a, a ferocious amount of head scratching going on. Yeah, honestly, it, it what I understood from that is what I understand from Portuguese, not much at all. Hmm. But, I mean, what, I suppose what I'm getting, Keith, I, I think I'm right about the head scratching, but it seems, OK, nothing on this scale has happened before. Mm, why not? What's changed? Well, you know, for years it's been mostly traditional methods of electricity generation what's changed now is that there's an awful lot of renewables ergo it's something to do with the renewables now there's there's some kind of you know there's some kind of plausibility in that argument we didn't mean it's right so actually the argument is wrong so you know disturbances of this scale can and do happen and we look back through history of you know i mean decades uh, and and you know, up into recent times as well you know this particular one is, is, is especially big, but disturbances of this kind, we, on average, we see somewhere in the world every year. But I don't recall a whole country being blacked out, do you? I mean... Yes. Or such as? Uh, Italy in 2003, uh, the whole country was, was, was blacked out. Uh, I think it was September 2003, but 2003 seemed to be a particularly bad year because in August 2003, it wasn't the whole country, but... 50 million people lost supply uh, in the northeastern US and, and, uh, and Canada. Uh, there's, uh, you know, I mean, yeah. not quite the same scale. 2006, there were something like 15 million people across Europe lost supply. Uh, in when was it? 2000, it might be around 2006, seven. Uh, there were two in successive days big incidents in India, took a lot okay. of stuff down. I mean, there's, there's, there's a whole catalogue of these things, actually. Yeah. And, 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 they, and they're all in different systems. A lot of them were using a lot of fossil fuels, actually. So that narrative that, oh, well, you know, it must be renewables that are to blame here. When you unpack a lot of these events, um, because they're all kind of supposed to be this sort of, you know, operated in a secure manner, yeah. you tend to see that, okay, something, something kind of ordinary happened, but then other things that should have responded automatically in a kind of a, a suitable way didn't. And it was almost a kind of compounding, a kind of a bit, a bit unlucky, but then you, when you unpack it afterwards, Maybe it was okay. Something was installed or set, maybe not quite correctly. Um, you know, there was some bad weather going on in some, you know, storms or whatever. Some of these events. Sometimes there's human error involved that kind of made things worse. But one of the kind of difficulties with an electricity system, which normally is incorrect, is extremely reliable. You know, this is why it's such a, you know, one of the reasons why it's such a shock when it happens is it normally doesn't happen. Um, but when you reach a certain point of no return, as it were, 
things can go mm-hmm. very wrong very quickly. So that kind of within seconds that okay. we saw in this, this thing. And this how, week. W- will we get an answer pretty briefly? And how long will we have to wait to I get? We might have to wait weeks to, to right. find out really what. what I okay. mean, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thanks very much indeed, Keith Bell from the University of Strathclyde and uh, Marion Midday, uh, BBC journalist in Lisbon. It's just gone 11.30.